What is going on, Detroit Lions fans? Welcome back. Steve here, Detroit Den 3 and 3, your favorite and your number one go to source for Detroit Lions content. Please, 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 please hit that subscribe button, leave some comments. Let's have a conversation. That's what we love to do, man. We love to create a dialogue, we love to create an environment. I know it's YouTube, and I know we're not sitting down face to face, but we like to have a conversation and create an environment that's kind of like a bar, you know, just shooting your shit with your boys, talking some Detroit Lions football. We try to make it comfortable here. If this is your first time tuning in, thanks for watching. Regular listener, also thanks for watching. Uh, I saw an article. So, man, I, I, I saw an article the other day, and I wanted to talk about this yesterday, but I got a little busy with some personal stuff, so I unfortunately could not. And um, this might be old news. I don't know if other podcasters have been covering this. I don't know um, if anyone else has talked about this in the Detroit Lions world. Um, I don't really follow what other Detroit Lions content creators do, if I'm being honest. But I'm going to show you guys the article, and then I'm going to get into to, to my issue here and my, my beef. If you guys can see this. Um, it's Bill Belichick, Detroit Lions enjoying the fruits of the labor from Matt Patricia. And this is from Dave Burkett. This is not a, uh, I love Dave Burkett. He does an excellent job with the Detroit Free Press. He's just doing his job reporting what, what, what this conversation was about. So I'll scroll through this right here. I'll let you guys uh, pause this episode and read this if you want to. Um, I'm not going to read it word for word. I'm just going to kind of paraphrase. But as you can see, Bill Belichick went on a podcast and was praising the fruits of the labor that we are reaping from Matt Patricia. Um, he went on to talk about, you know, how we have such a great offensive line right now because Matt Patricia, and I guess we have to mention Bob Quinn, because I'm going to get into that in a second, um, because they drafted Taylor Decker and Frank Ragnow, two of the five pieces on our offensive line. If you're sitting there and you're doing the math, you're thinking that's only 40%. It's only 40% of our offensive line. Does, does Matt Patricia and Bob Quinn deserve all the credit in the world for this offensive line because of two pieces? I'll let you guys decide that, but here's my problem. Matt Patricia was the biggest mistake in Detroit Lions history, okay? In, in Detroit Lions history. And you have to tie in Bob Quinn. They go hand in hand. Um, so let, let's just say this, all right? I know that the head coach has a huge say in who gets drafted. All right? I know that from watching Inside the Den. I know that Brad Holmes and Dan Campbell are working hand-to-hand -to, -hand to build this roster. Um, they're working cohesively. But at the end of the day, the the um, all of the glory and all of the blame, if something doesn't go right in the draft, falls on the general manager. So that's, in this instance, um, we're talking about Brad Holmes and we're talking about Bob Quinn. Okay, those were the two the two previous GMs or the current GM and the previous GM. Those guys get all the glory for the draft, all the trades, all that stuff. It, it, you know, the coaches involved. I'm aware of that, but the GM gets the credit. And I'm not here to talk good things about Bob Quinn either. We're going to talk about a lot of things today. But if we're just focusing on the draft, okay, we yeah, we could focus on just the draft because this is what it's about. It, it's Bill Belichick saying that. Um, we're reaping the fruits of the labor because of Taylor Decker and Frank Ragnow. Well, let's take a look at let's take a look at some of those draft picks. We're not we're not just going to focus on just two. Let's take a look at the Bob Quinn Matt Patricia era from 2016 to 2020. <laughs> Focusing on the draft, 2016 drafted Taylor Decker. Solid. Hey, he's still playing in the league. What are we on year 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 eight nine now? Um, Taylor Decker just got a new contract, you know, anchor of the of the offensive line, playing that left tackle position. Um, hey, I love Taylor Decker, man. He's a Buckeye. I, I let that slide. He's, he's helping my, my Detroit Lions win football games. He's been here through all the bad times. Uh, him and Frank, I guess, are kind of in the same boat. But Taylor Decker's, he's the old man. He's the old man in the room when it comes to seniority on the Detroit Lions. Okay, no one's been here as long as him, I don't think. Let's move to 2017. Who did we draft? Not 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 a quiz question or not a not a quiz show. You know we've done those before, but 2017, Jared Davis, Jared Davis. Um, I think he called me about my car's extended warranty the other day. He's not even in the league anymore, to my knowledge. I think he was on a practice squad with the Jets a couple years ago, but I, I'm not following where he's at, and I don't really care to look it up. If I'm being honest with you, it's irrelevant. He's not a Detroit Lion anymore. We passed on a guy in 2017. Maybe you've heard of him by the name of T.J. Watt. OK, that's just one guy. You guys can go look at the 2017 draft board and see that there are some other guys we passed on. T.J. Watt, we we went with Jared Davis instead. So uh, does are we reaping the fruits of the labor from that one? Because T.J. Watt's still one of the most dominant pass rushers in the NFL. Let's move to 2018. Not going to talk too long about it. Frank Ragnow, 
my guy, man. I love Frank right now. He's an absolute warrior. Okay. This guy fights through every single injury. He's the best center in the NFL. Um, I thought he was the best center in the NFL for a couple of years, even with Jason Kelsey being in the league. Maybe I'm a, I'm a homer, but Frank Ragnow, the center of this offensive line, literally and figuratively speaking, like this dude is an absolute machine. Not going to, I can't say anything even close to negative about Frank. Let's move to 2019. Okay. This is where it starts to get interesting with our draft picks. We drafted TJ Hawkinson. Uh, I won't exactly call this one a, a miss, but it raised some questions. Um, really, really like what, 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 what are we doing here? I, I'm not sure. Uh, it doesn't make sense a little, but we passed on players like Rashawn Gary, Brian Burns, Dexter Lawrence, Jeffrey Simmons, Montez Sweat. So are we still reaping the fruits of the labor? Because TJ Hawkinson is playing for the Minnesota Vikings now, not even on the team. Love Sam Laporta. Upgrade. We passed on some guys that are, we're talking pro bowlers. And I know TJ Hawkinson was a pro bowler as well, but we passed on some, some pretty damn good players that could still be on this team. Okay. Let's move to 2020. One of the worst years in Lions draft history. If you guys are familiar with it, we drafted Jeff Okuda. Who I think I think I saw he's with the I know we traded him to the Falcons. I thought I saw he was I, I don't I don't know who he's with. Again, it's one of those those things. I don't care. He's not a Detroit Lion. I um when I'm looking at the 2020 draft board, all right, we took Jeff Okuda at number three. We passed on Tua Tungo Bailoa, who I didn't really want at the time, but I can understand a lot of people wanting him and what he's going through right now. We passed on players like Justin Herbert. Derek Brown of the Carolina Panthers. We passed on players like Tristan Wirfs, a, a Pro Bowl left tackle for Tampa Bay. C.D. Lamb, does that name sound familiar? Um, and then there's a guy that got ended up getting drafted by Minnesota who, who plays okay football in the name of Justin Jefferson. Um, Patrick Queen, who got selected by the Baltimore Ravens at pick 28. Jordan Love, Brandon Ayuk. <laughs> 2020 was a loaded draft class. And we walked away with the biggest bust of the 2020 draft class. So are we still reaping the benefits from that one, Bill Belichick? Listen, I understand Bill Belichick's, like, what he's kind of trying to do because Matt Patricia coached with him back in New England. They won some Super Bowls. Patricia was a phenomenal defensive coordinator. Like, they, they, they won some championships with players that weren't, like, household names on their defense, okay? Okay. I get Bill Belichick supporting his guy. I understand that 100%. But to come on here and say that we're reaping the benefits of two players, like two players don't make a difference, can, can make a difference on a team. Two players will not propel you to a Super Bowl. Okay. This, this takes a team effort. So when we're talking about Matt Patricia, we're talking about a dude who was an absolute cancer for the Detroit Lions. There's, there's a reason that players like Pro Bowl players like Darius Slay, Quandre Diggs wanted out of Detroit so bad because of Matt Patricia. We didn't benefit anything from Matt Patricia. Matt Patricia, and I hate saying his name, this, this little troll absolutely ruined the Detroit Lions. And everyone was so excited because he's a rocket scientist or whatever he was, and he came from the Patriot way. The worst coach in Detroit Lions history. So for Bill Belichick to say outrageous comments like that. Now, there's a lot of things Bill Belichick could have said. Okay, he could have just kind of played the very conservative. Like, yeah, you know, Matt Patricia, he, um, he, he did some okay things, but he, you know, ultimately just didn't work out in Detroit. Something along those lines. Okay, we could have just left it there. Reaping the fruits of the labor right now today in 2024 is simply because of Brad Holmes and Dad Campbell. I don't. Uh, does Matt Patricia have a fingerprint on this team? Yeah, he does because of Frank Ragnow and Taylor Decker. But to say that we're reaping the fruits of the labor when Detroit was absolutely not a team that anyone wanted to play for, we could we had to overpay for free agents to come here, and then our our high caliber Pro Bowl type players wanted to leave because of this guy. It sucks that Matt Patricia. Unfortunately, I have to admit he does have a, he does have a, a, an, an impact on this team because of. Decker and Ragnow, but ultimately I would say that that's more of a Bob Quinn thing than a Matt Patricia thing. So guys, I had to get this off my chest. All right. I read that article again, phenomenal article by Dave Arquette reporting, doing his job. I appreciate it. I had to talk about it. And I know that there's so much going on with the Detroit lions right now that I, I could talk about 
10 other things, or, or I could talk about the offense, the defense. I could talk about a lot of things, but I had to share my opinion on this. I hope you guys appreciate that. Leave your comments down below. Share your thoughts. Share your opinions. Hit that like button. I will be back later with another show.